Hey guys, wanted to show off my Webster Chicago Model 80-1 wire recorder made in the 1940s. And I have uh, done some restoration to this unit to bring it back to life. And uh, it's kind of interesting because this unit really is like a time machine. It is a tape recorder that records on wires or on wire on a big huge spool of wire and obviously this was owned by somebody in the 1940s and uh, it's somebody's collection of memories that are on here I don't know whose memories they are but uh, these little spools here this one and these here that I've got on my workbench as well are memories they're little memory banks and I think that's the coolest part about this particular unit Here's the unit's original microphone, so a lot of the speech that you're going to hear in a moment was made on this microphone. There's the original power cord. I'm using uh, something a little newer, plugged into my power strip there. But before I tell you what I had to do to get it to work, I wanted to go ahead and play you some of what is on this recording. It's just kind of, uh, just kind of cool and remarkably clear as well. So let me start that for you. I seemed to know what I was doing and waited a long time before pulling the ring with both hands. I was jerked upright with a terrible boat and said in great surprise, My God, I am going to live. My name is James Friday. <clears throat> Far back the crowd watched admiringly at the wagon borne down stern fast upon them, cutting a wide arc over the wet ways of prairie grass. Not until it was 200 yards away did they stop cheering. When it was 100 yards away, they scattered like a buffalo stampede. The prairie streamed pentos. My name is Walter A. Brown. The Fullers named their son Philip after his maternal grandfather. That was an error in judgment because the time came when the name Philip Fuller aroused chuckles and snickers among the pleasure-loving faces of the countryside. At the age of one, Phil had practically settled upon red as the best color for hair. Sometime in his third year, the truth was established that he was left-handed. When given something he did not want, he threw it away with violence. My name is Orville Grenade. The road is wide and the stars are out, and the breath of night is sweet. And this is a time when wanderlust should seize upon your feet. But I'm glad to turn from the open road and the starlight on my face and to leave the splendor of outdoors for a human dwelling place. My name is Johnny Stark. He did not answer when he went away. I remember that a new moon hung over the mountains and I watched him go in silence up the hill. I watched him the next day, but he did not come. The details of packing my first were belonging loading my car, arranging a bed over the seat where the dog would ride, occupy me until late in the day. I closed the cabin and started the car, noticing the sun was in the west, and I should do well to be out of the mountains by nightfall. I stopped by the orphanage and left the cabin key and money for the light bill. My name is Delbert Monday. I don't know where he is, she said. I'm afraid he's not well. He didn't eat his dinner this noon. One of the other boys saw him climb over the hill into the lawn. He was supposed to follow the ball this afternoon. It's not like him. He's unusually reliable. So there you go. There is somebody's memory from, uh, from long past. That was the play position. And here is the rewind position. So, uh, I don't know about you, but I didn't know about uh, wire recorders until recently. And uh, I've been in, playing with real-to-real -real tape recorders since I was a kid, as well as cassette recorders. But I had never seen a wire recorder 
and I knew that if I bought one and it had spools with it, that that particular spool would have stuff on it that would be uh, really fascinating to hear. I don't have the cover on it right now so that you can see the inner workings of it. This is your uh, supply spindle here, your take up spindle here, and your playback and record head there. And I replaced these little foam pads. There's one here and there's one under here as well. You can kind of see it sticking out right there. I'm going to turn around here and you can see better. There it is. So those foam pads uh, not only act as brakes, but they act as a tension. So they put tension on the reel as it's playing, as well as act as a brake. And because this particular roller right here is pretty well hardened, it's it's got a little bit of rubberiness to it, but not a lot. Um, I had to really lay off on, on these uh, brakes. In fact, that spring that you see right there, I replaced that spring because it was too tight. It, it wouldn't allow the this uh, reel here to turn. But by doing that, replacing those pads, it appears to uh, have allowed it to play. And as you can hear, it plays rather nicely. For a while, I had been pretty perplexed with it as far as why it wouldn't play. When you're restoring an old unit such as this, you have to replace the capacitors. And that is what I had to do. There was uh, several capacitors. Uh, in fact, I'll come around this way here. You can see all those yellow things right there. Those are the capacitors that I had to replace. And uh, there's quite a few of them. Not a whole, you know, gazillion of them, but there's quite a few. And typically when you take an old unit like this and replace the capacitors in it, it will bring it back to life. I had done so, uh, but it didn't bring it back to life. And I was thinking, wow, well maybe I need to go the route of resistors but in this case, it ended up being this tube right here, woo, which is still really hot. That particular tube, according to the uh, schematic that I purchased from the Sam's uh, PhotoFacts website, um, I believe that's a, a, a 6V6 tube. So the 6SJ7, the 6J5 GT, and the 6V6 are all new tubes. So there's really only one tube in here that I have not replaced, and that is this one right here. There were also these large can capacitors, like this one, that have capacitors, three different capacitors on the inside, like this one did. And because I didn't replace those right away, um, there was smoke coming out of the uh, transformer. And I went on to a, a forum and said, hey guys, what do I need to do? And they said, well, why didn't you replace the, the capacitor cans? And I said, well, I don't feel like it. And they said, well, that's where you need to start. So you can see these capacitors right here. There's actually three of them right in a row there. Those three little units took the place of this guy right here. And probably one of these, there was three of these in there, was shorted and causing the unit to um, to cause the, uh, the transformer to smoke. So uh, a very fascinating uh, unit. And you know, these old uh, technology things, uh, you can see on my, on my wall, I've restored a, a record cutter and a 1953 Munts TV. And in all these cases, there is something magical about bringing an old unit like this back to life and it's almost like a time capsule that's that's waiting to be opened and uh, I haven't listened to all of these spools yet I've listened to a couple of them as you've heard uh, some there as well in fact I listened to this one here and it had uh, some old uh, classical music off of uh, sounded like the guy had took the microphone and stuck it next to his radio because you could hear people talking in the background but uh, in any case, a fascinating experience to uh, to get this unit working, and um, I don't know, I recommend you uh, get a hold of one of these. 
But uh, of course, if you're not experienced working with something like this, you need to read up and find out about electricity and voltages and having one of these open like this is not necessarily the safest thing to do. But uh, in any case, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, particular video. If I find anything more fascinating on these spools over here, I'll be sure and make another video with the playback of those spools. So again, thank you for watching and subscribe and like and make comments and I'll see you soon.